Hey guys, today we are going to be given a table and match it to equations and graphs. We're going to answer the question, how do I create an equation and graph from a table? So remember, we are talking about linear relationships, which are equations or relationships in the form y equals mx plus b. So let's review what m and b are. The y-intercept is that b value. And this is where x is 0. So in our tables, we are going to be looking for where x is 0. And then on the graph, this is where we cross the y-axis, since it is the y-intercept. Then the next part that we're going to look at is the coefficient of x, that m value. We often refer, that, refer to that as the rate of change in the dependent or the y variable compared to the change in the independent variable or x variable. So we will do the change in y over change in x to find that rate of change or m value. So to write the equation, you need those two things, the y-intercept and the rate of change. So to match an equation to a table, we'll determine the rate of change and the y-intercept from the table and then select the equation that matches. So let's start with this table right here. I'm going to start with the B value, which remember that's where X is zero. So I'm going to look in my table for where X is zero, which is right here. So that means that my B value is one. So I need an equation that has adding one to it. So if you look at all of my equations, they all have adding one except for equation A. That's adding four. So I know that equation A is not going to be my table, or not going to match the table. Okay, the next thing that I need is the rate of change, which is the change in Y over the change in X. So first thing we're going to do is look at my Y values. It looks like they are going up. They are increasing. So I know that my rate of change is not going to be negative. So I can also eliminate answer choice D. Okay, so my rate of change is either going to be four or two. Let's look more closely at the table to see if we can figure that out. So my change in my Y values, well, from one to five, I add four. From five to nine, I also add four. From nine to 13, I would add four. And from 13 to 17, I would also add four. So it looks like my change in Y over change in X is four for my change in Y over as you can see, my X values are increasing by one. So change in Y over change in X is four over one or four. So that makes the correct equation B because my rate of change is four and my Y value is one. So now let's go ahead and graph that. There's two ways you can graph it. You can graph it with the equation with the Y intercept or the rate of change or and the rate of change, or you could just graph the points in the table. For this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and graph the points in the table. My y-intercept is my first point at zero, one, and then my next point is one, five, so I'll go right one and up five, and then the next point is two, nine, so I'll go right two and up nine. And there you can see, I'm gonna draw my line through this now, You can see that my y-intercept, I'm crossing the y-axis at one, and my rate of change, I am going up four over one. So we'll graph the next line with that rate of change in y-intercept. Let's go ahead and look at our next relationship. So again, I can see the y-intercept in my table. There's the value when x is zero, y is two. So that means my y-intercept is two. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at my equations and I'm going to eliminate any answer choices that do not have a y-intercept of two, which is D. The rest of these equations do have a y-intercept of two. Okay, now my rate of change is what I need to find next. It looks like it's either going to be two, four, or 0 0.5. Remember the change in y over the change in x is how we find the rate of change. So if I look at my y values, I can see that they are increasing and to go from two to four, I am increasing by two. And then in my X values from zero to four, I'm increasing by 
4. So my rate of change is 2 over 4 because the change in y's was 2 and the change in x's was 4. And 2 over 4 simplifies to 1 half or 0 0.5. So there is my rate of change which makes answer choice C my answer there. Okay, now on this graph, I'm going to graph it using the y-intercept and the rate of change. So remember my y-intercept was two, so that means I'm gonna cross the y-axis at two. And then my rate of change is one half. So my change in y's is positive one, that means I'm gonna go up one. And then my change in x is positive two, that means I'm gonna go right two. So I'll go up one, right, two, up one, right two, up one, right two, up one, right two, and there's enough points to plot my line there. And there is my line through those points. Okay, one more. On this one, I can see that my y-intercept is zero. So that means I have a proportional graph here. So we're going to be going through the origin of my y-intercept to zero. That means I can eliminate equations A and C because they had that y-intercept of 15. And then the next thing I need to determine is the rate of change, the change in y over the change in x. So I'm just going to use the first two points to determine this. To get from 0 to 15, I added 15. So my change in y is 15. And then from 0 to 5, I added 5. So my change in x is 5. And 5 over 15 is 3. So my rate of change is 3. And the equation that shows a rate of change of 3 is d. Okay, now I am going to graph this. So it is proportional. As we talked about, we have a y-intercept of zero, so I'm gonna start at the origin. And then my rate of change is three, which is over that invisible one denominator. So my change in y is how much I go up positive three, and then I go over one. So I go up three over one, up three over one, up three over one. And there is my line through those points.